For this week's clinical file, we have Cole, and Cole is being seen in the acute care hospital after a severe burn across the anterior neck, chest, and upper extremities. Upon admission, which of the following physical therapy interventions is the most recommended? So we have A, early gait training with a rollator walker. B, modalities for pain management. C, positioning the neck into hyperextension with elbows in extension and supination. And then D, placing the upper extremities into a dependent position to increase blood flow. So as you can see with this question, it's going to be a bit about burns, right? A bit about knowing what to do as a physical therapist when your patient presents to you with a burn. So you got to have this good information because this is something that's also likely to come up uh, on the MPTE, right? It's a common thing that we see definitely in acute care, the burn units that we may uh, go into. So let's take a look at the top of the question. This has Cole is being seen in the acute care hospital. So now we got the setting going on and it says after a severe burn, pretty straightforward off the top, right? Patients in the hospital, severe burn. Gotcha. Now it says across, the severe burn is across the anterior neck. All right, so I'll underline that. Anterior neck, chest, and upper extremity. So it's giving us a location for this severe burn. Now, not only does that sound pretty, you know, pretty painful and, and all that stuff, I can't imagine, but they're in some very, not just sensitive areas, but in some areas that are just have a high likelihood of becoming a major problem, like the anterior neck and chest and, and, and upper extremities area. I mean, there's a great chance that this area could become very bound down tight and all those things limiting a person's range of motion. So that's what I'm starting to think about. All right. But I'm also thinking about the level of pain that may be involved in a severe burn. I mean, it doesn't tell me what grades or anything, but I can imagine we're dealing with some grade two, potentially grade threes, right? So let's go down the question. It says upon admission, which of the following physical therapy interventions is most recommended? I think that this is important to kind of highlight this point right here where it says upon admission. Notice how it doesn't say that the patient has been in physical therapy for several weeks or been in the hospital for several weeks. It says upon admission. So it's giving us a frame of work to think about. It's giving us a time frame to think about because this patient is now in the hospital just entering. And what is the physical therapist primarily responsible for? When a patient's presenting with a severe burn across this area, anterior neck, chest, and upper extremities, and again, they're just coming into the hospital. What do we do? That's the bottom line question. Now, for those of you on the podcast, thank you for joining me. Let me go through the answer choices we got here. We got A, early gait training with a rollator walker. B is modalities for pain management. C is positioning the neck into hyperextension with elbows in extension and supination. And then we have D, which is placing the upper extremities into a dependent position to increase blood flow. All right, so let's start knocking down these answer choices. And actually, before we even do that, can I ask you just to see what you would say? What is our primary role as a physical therapist in this particular situation? Patient comes in, severe burn, they're in the hospital, and now they've just gotten admitted. What do we do first? What is our primary focus? Are you thinking pain management? Are you thinking range of motion, gait training? Like what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Because that's what we're about to break down right now. So A says early gait training with a rollator walker. Now, when I look at gait training, is that something bad for this patient? For them to be gait training? I mean, not necessarily. No, not a bad thing. I mean, the only thing that's kind of interesting is I'm not 100% sure why we're necessarily like gait training the patient, though. It says that the patient has anterior neck, chest, and upper extremity burns. Not necessarily anything related to the head, 
making me feel like possibly there was a TBI and maybe they need to be retrained in the whole gate training type thing or any type of lower extremity. Like there's nothing in the question that makes it seem like we would need to train them from gate, uh, gate perspective anyway. Maybe early ambulation and getting the patient moving. Or, or educating the patient on moving or educating the nursing staff on uh, making sure that the patient's getting up multiple times or that type of deal. But for us to do gate training in this situation, I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know if we really need to do that for this patient. Again, I, I understand the idea of getting the patient up and moving, but do we need to gate train them? You know, get, get them a walker or get them this sort of thing and teach them how to use it? Maybe, maybe not. All right. And then it says a rollator walker. And I'm like, OK, you know, p potentially the patient will need that. But my question to you is, is this something that is going to be the most recommended, the most appropriate, the most important? And I'm kind of like, ah, I don't know about that. I guess I'll hold on to it for now. But again, I don't know if it's the first thing I would do or the most recommended thing that I would do. Let's see what the other answers have. All right, so for now, I'm just going to put a little squiggly line le next to that, letting myself know that it's kind of, yeah, maybe, all right, type deal. Let's look at B, modalities for pain management. I ask you again, what is the physical therapist's primary role in this particular setting with this particular patient? Is it our role to be doing a lot of pain management? And in that situation, I would say no. I leave that up to the nursing team. I leave that up to the MD to determine what type of pain management needs to be done, whether it's medication or whatnot. But my primary role as a physical therapist or my initial is not going to be pain mod modalities for pain management. All right. Now, I may be a part of that. I may be... A, you know, potentially doing something with modalities for pain management, but that's not my primary thing, all right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an X next to that because I believe that there's gonna be a better answer than modalities for pain management. Again, given the setting that the patient's in, that would be more on the medical team, like your nurse or your MD, to be more involved with pain management while the physical therapist has some different things that we're doing, all right? Let's look at C. We got positioning the neck into hyperextension with elbows in extension and supination. Do we do this? Do we position a patient who has severe burns? I love this answer. You want to know why? Because the patient has severe burns across the anterior neck, the chest, the upper extremities. And the problem with that is if we leave it, if we don't do anything with positioning, the patient's going to wind up getting a, a lot of skin restrictions, adhesions. And as their wounds heal, now your patient is going to be stuck into cervical flexion. Their arms are going to be stuck into uh, shoulder adduction bilaterally, right? Their chest is going to be really bound down because of these adhesions. And now as the patient gets better, they've lost all their range of motion by the time that they're leaving the hospital and going back to their their, their everyday life, right? So we want to make sure that we're preventing these adhesions. Is that not what a physical therapist does or one of the things, but one of the major things that the physical therapist is thinking about is making sure that we're preserving the patient's range of motion in this setting. The other teammates on the medical team are not really, you know, keeping their mind on that. That's the physical therapist role to make sure that these things are happening. So positioning the neck into hyperextension, it's perfect. I love it. And I know you may say, what? Putting it in a hyperextension? Isn't that kind of excessive? Well, here's the deal. Even you wouldn't want to put it in cervical flexion. You wouldn't want to put it into just neutral position. Again, the patient will start to gain these adhesions, get bound down, and then limit their range of motion. We want to make sure that we maintain that full range of motion. How can I make sure that the patient can still go into cervical extension? That's an important motion, y'all. The only way I can make sure that the patient do that, it does that is if I position the neck into hyperextension. Again, making sure they, may, they maintain that. Now it says with elbows and extension and supination, again, I definitely want to make sure those elbows are extended. They're supinated, yes, because the last thing I want is for those elbows to be bound into flexion and pronation. 
all right? So we wanna try to keep as much range of motion as possible. I love C, it's right on par with what the physical therapist needs to look at. Let's look at D. D says, placing the upper extremities into a dependent position to increase blood flow. Can I tell you why I don't really like this answer? All right, at the beginning, before we started really breaking down these answer choices and knocking them out, I asked you a question. Like, when a patient comes in, severe burns across this area and upon admission, like, what is the physical therapist's, like, primary role? Like, what are they doing? Well, we kind of alluded to one of them, right? It's making sure that the patient has good range of motion and we're positioning the patient and preventing things like contractures and skin adhesions. So that's one thing. But what's the other? There's something else. Upon admission, the physical therapist is thinking about edema. Edema, baby. Do not forget it. So it's maintaining res uh, range of motion, preserving that, but also reducing the amount of edema, which happens a lot when these patients have burns, all right? So we wanna make sure that we're positioning the patient so that the patient has a decrease or reducing the, that edema, and we make sure we're not doing activities that increase the patient's level of edema, cool? So let's look at D. D says placing the upper extremities into a dependent position to increase blood flow. Let me ask you, placing an extremity into a dependent position, would that increase edema or would it decrease it? Y'all give me the answer. Come on, man. Y'all know if you put your extremity into a dependent position, you know it increases the amount of swelling. It increases the amount of edema. That goes against what the physical therapist really wants. And so guess what? D, I wouldn't do it. I would actually have those upper extremities elevated, not in a dependent position. So that gets rid of the answer D as in dog, leaving us with our best answer of C as in cat, positioning the neck into hyperextension with the elbows into extension and supination. Congratulations to those of you who got this one correct. I know you may have been thinking, whether you're on the treadmill, you're running around listening to me on the go. Here's the thing. You may have been saying, well, Kyle, Coach K, you didn't say anything about those shoulders, though. You said positioning the neck into hyperextension, elbows into extension and supination, but you didn't say anything about shoulder positioning, keeping the shoulders into abduction or in the airplane splint like they talk about all the time. So that's the reason why I didn't pick C as the answer. I get you. I get you. That makes sense. But listen, on the NPTE, it's not about the perfect answer. It's about the best answer. I agree with you 100%. C is... I mean, I could have thrown in there, in that answer choice, something about keeping the shoulders in abduction. You are right. That would have been more of the perfect answer. But again, when I'm looking at these answer choices, I'm not looking for perfection. I am looking for the best answer. And don't get caught up in always like, oh, that answer is not perfect. It doesn't have that one piece that I need. Not all the time is it going to have the, everything that you learned in clinic or everything that you saw in the book. Sometimes it is missing a piece, but it's still the best answer. And in this case, you got it. C, as in cat, is the best answer. Congratulations to those of you who got this one correct. Uh, one of the major things that you need to know about burns is obviously the severity, first degree, second degree, third degree. I said grades before. I meant first degree, second, and third degree, right? But... Um, one other thing that you need to know is the rule of nines. You got to be very, very just solid with that idea, understanding how to use it. And whether it's an adult or a child, you got to know how to use it. All right. So if you need help with burns, listen, I got a cheat sheet for you. Those of you on the podcast right now, thank you for continuing to, to support this. I have that cheat sheet for you. So you can go into the show notes, click and click the link in there and get it right now.